The Eminence Shadow, Episode 11, The Goddess Trial. So we start off with probably the best opening in this entire series so far, where we have Sid getting naked and climbing into a hot springs. And so he slowly gets inside the bath. He's just kind of relaxing, eyes closed. And then the camera, which is like focused on him, slowly starts moving to the side. And we see Alexia watching with a shocked expression on her face. She's just completely bewildered by the fact that Sid just walked into the hot springs with her because she was already there. I freaking love this scene. <laughs> it was hilarious. And I also like the fact that this series decides to do the classic boy walks in on a girl in the bathroom or in this case a hot springs differently because in every other anime or any other manga guy accidentally walks in on the girl in the bath or in the hot tub or whatever and she immediately starts yelling and hitting him and then the guy starts crying and apologizing and screaming and uh yeah it, that's how it's always done and it's just like all right that gag's been done to death but here, instead, we get teasing between the two of them. First off, we start off kind of normal, where she's just asking what he's doing here, and then we get some exposition on the goddess trial and stuff like that, about how warriors come, and they uh, it's for this tournament, a fighting tournament, where they get to summon like the spirits, the ghosts of the past heroes, uh, and they get to battle them. And if they win... Then they basically get a lot of prestige and they can become a knight so, like in, in, in any kingdom. She's like, you know, if you came for that tournament, then I'm sorry, but you have to apply for advance. And, uh, you know, obviously you didn't do that since you didn't know what the goddess trial even was. And, uh, yeah, she starts talking about how she's actually here. Like no one really knows, but she's actually here to audit the archbishop. Uh, basically some shitty things has been going on with him. And, uh, one of the previous bishops was killed and she's trying to figure out like what's going on. But then she says she can't say any more to an outsider and she says, uh, if you want to know more, you'll have to join the Crimson Knights. And he's like, no thanks. And she's like, join after you graduate. He's like, no thanks. And she even says, I'll file an application for you. Don't. <laughs> Basically, she's trying to get him to raise up his status so that she can go out with him. And then she teases him and she says, I had assumed you would ogle me like you were trying to eat me with your eyes, but I see I was wrong. And Sid's like, well, I make it a point not to look at people while I'm in the hot springs. Keeps us all more comfortable while bathing. In that spirit, might I ask you to stop glancing over at my Excalibur? And she teases him. She's like, you call that Excalibur? I think the word you're looking for is warm. And he stands up and he's like, don't judge a book by its cover. You may come to find out that what you thought was a worm was merely still sh contained in its sheath. When a holy sword is removed from its sheath, its sparkling blade is set free. And it sets off on a quest for the Garden of Chaos. <laughs> and then he gets a towel and he like whips it between his legs so that the back end slaps his ass. <laughs> I don't know why he did that. I don't know why it's hilarious, but just a little whoosh noise it makes as it slaps. It, as he, he basically towel slaps his own ass. And then he walks away. And Alexia's just staring at him like with a shocked expression on her face. <laughs> And she just kind of like stands up and she just takes the towel off her head and just kind of stares at it. And I was like, all right, that was pretty hilarious. I like the fact that we kind of played on the, the whole trope with the uh, the guy walking into a girl in the hot springs or the bathroom or whatever you want to call it. Uh, in this case, they don't like yell and argue or anything like that. They just have friendly, flirty banter. And uh, it's actually the guy that gets the upper hand in the end. But then we uh, we cut to where the tournament's being held, where we have the Archbishop, Archbishop Nelson. And uh, yeah, he's basically has all the warriors inside the uh, Colosseum. And he go gives like this huge speech. And as he's giving the speech, Alexia is watching him. And she's like giving him the stink eye, uh, calling him uh, a baldy and stuff. She's like, you might want to mourn at least since uh, one of your friends has been has been killed, has been murdered. Uh, the former archbishop, uh, basically, uh, he cancels the audit that Alexia was going to do uh, with the Crimson Knights. He's like, well, you came here to audit the previous archbishop, but since he's dead, there's no reason for you to do the audit. So, uh, yeah, go along now. Uh, you can stay here and watch the tournament if you like. But other than that, I'm not going to indulge you in your hobbies. 
So he kind of just brushes her off. So she's obviously pissed off. She uh, is saying that she's thinking about composing a letter to send to her father to basically convince her father to allow the audit to still continue. But by the time the letter goes to her father, he makes a decision and sends back the request. The archbishop, the new archbishop, Nelson, could have swept all the evidence under the rug. So she's like, well, I'm going to have to maybe try to do the audit anyways. I just have to find it, do it in a way where I'm not caught because I don't want to sour relations between the divine knights and the church. As she's like thinking this, she hears people cheering for Beta, a.k.a. Uh, Natsumi Kafka, as in, you know, Kafka, like the, the author who did uh, Metamorphosis. But yeah, uh, Alexia is obviously jealous of Beta, mostly of her breasts, like, we have a scene where Beta kind of bends down a little bit and her boobs just really jiggle. And Alexia kind of, you know, has a shocked expression. She looks down at her own boobs. And, uh, yeah, we, we get just like a a moment where uh, Alexia is talking about how she thinks Beta is like a fake, a phony. And Beta like turns her and gives her this smug look. <laughs> and then just the expression on Alexia's face is hilarious. And then we see Beta's thoughts uh, where Beta feels the same way about Alexia. She believes that Alexia was taking advantage of Sid, um, trying to get close to him and, you know, become familiar with him and stuff like that. And how she kind of wants that place. She's like, uh, everybody knows that the kind of woman that Sid should have had instead is a elf woman with uh, silver hair and a mole on her face, which is Beta. So yeah, basically Alexia is pissed off at Beta because she believes Beta is a phony and Beta's pissed off Alexia because Alexia quote unquote dated Sid and she wants that role. And so we have a moment where Alexia like stomps on Beta's foot and uh, yeah, it's just kind of like a little funny moment. And then we cut to Sid in the audience and he's just kind of slurping down a, a drink as he's watching the fight about to go. And we have this pretty funny moment where we have uh, two background characters right behind him going over uh the rules basically uh they're like one of them's like talking to the other and saying how this tournament is like you know you fight until uh basically it's a one-on-one -on -one fight one warrior goes in and then uh if they're worthy they summon a ghost of one of the heroes and you know of the past and then you fight until one of you is done like either until the spirit gets demolished or until you get knocked out he even mentions that sometimes people get killed and then the other one's like, well, why the hell would you want to pay a bunch of money to go into a tournament where you can get killed? And then he explains that if you win your match in the goddess trial, you basically get this bone, like a medal. And with one of those, you can become um, any knight order in the, in any nation in the world. And um, Sid's like listening to this and he's like, thank you uh, for your perfect example of background exposition. <laughs> and uh, we get just the different fighters coming in. All of them are, are coming in to try to summon something, but nothing gets summoned. They're not worthy. But the funny thing is just the names of the fighters are puns. So the first one that comes out kind of looks like a baseball player. Like his helmet looks like a baseball helmet. He has like almost like the umpire for armor. And he even kind of wields his, it's not even a sword. He has like a, like a bat kind of weapon. And he kind of wields it like a bat. And of course, his name is uh, Tope Batteris as in top batter. Another guy who comes in is Potato, as in potato. There's Skeletal, as in skeletal. There's um, Nix Dinlin, as in next in line. <laughs> and then one of my favorites is uh, Still Ain't Happening, as in still ain't happening. As in all these fighters are coming in and none of them are summoning anything, so it still ain't happening. Uh, so yeah, it's just, I, I just love the little humor that this series like just puts in even just little small moments like that like just the fighters coming in who uh aren't going to play any big roles they're just background characters they get just weird puns and then yeah sid's wondering about uh the fact that he hasn't seen alpha yet and then we cut to like montages of different people coming to the tournament as well as some of the shadow garden members and we see this one girl i don't recognize her but I want to see more of her. <laughs> like she is like the perfect dark skin tomboy uh, elf mommy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I haven't. I don't recognize her. I think she's just a background character. I don't think she's ever going to be shown again. 
I hope she plays a part. Like, I just saw, like, I just see a glimpse of her and I'm like, okay, I want more of her. But yeah, we, we cut back to Sid. It's nighttime. No one has been summoned yet. And then all of a sudden, um, the Archbishop calls for um, Sid Co um, Cogne to come out. And uh, Sid's just like yawning. And he's like, uh, Sid Cogne. Oh, that sounds like a, a good background character name. And, um, of course, in the stands, Alexia is confused that Sid's actually in the tournament. And it turns out because Princess Rose has put him in. She signed him up because, uh, yeah, she wants him to raise up in status so that they can uh, be together without anyone giving them any hassle. So, uh, yeah, Sid basically realizes that, oh, crap, they're calling my name. Well, what do I do? I have a couple of options. One, I can go in and actually compete in the, the fight. But then they'll, you know, what if a, a great warrior gets summoned and then everyone will realize that I'm holding back my true power. Option two would be that I just don't show up at all. In which case, uh, they already know my name. They know that I'm a knight at the, uh, the Midgar Academy. Uh, they'll probably kick me out of the school for making myself look bad in front of the church as well as my sister's probably going to beat me up. And then he's like, well, there's always option three, which is that I can, uh, by my calculations, no matter how intense the fighting, confusion ensues when a bomb goes off. Um, the bomb being shadow. So he reveals himself. He does his he who looks in the shadows and hunts from the shadows. And he ends up summoning one of the warriors. Uh, the person that he summons is Aurora, the Witch of Calamity. She also has another name that she goes by, but I'm not going to spoil it. But uh, yeah, let's just say that he he's meeting a very interesting figure here. But yeah, she's called Aurora, the Witch of Calamity. She caused a bunch of uh, chaos and destruction back when she was around. She basically plunged the world in chaos and she was sealed away by Oliver. And she is awesome. Like she is top tier best waifu in this entire series, in my opinion. And that's saying something because... As you all know, or you might know, if you watch my previous videos, I freaking love Delta so much. Delta is like best girl, but best waifu is Aurora. And we get a fight scene between them. Yeah, the Archbishop basically believes that Sid's going to get beaten very easily because he's nothing but a bandit. And uh, Beta, of course, is the only one talking him up. Well, Alexia kind of talks him up too about the fact that, uh, well, if he's able to summon someone as strong as Aurora then obviously he has to have some kind of strength if uh, Aurora believes that, she, you know, he's worthy enough to fight her. But yeah, she's the most powerful witch in history, and uh, she's going to fight Sid. And Sid is super excited about this. Like, basically, as soon as he sees her, he has like a smile on his face, and he realizes that this woman is going to give him the greatest fight he's ever had so far. He even says that like she feels the same way I do, a battle in conversation. The shifting of a sword's points, the movement of one's gaze, the placement of the feet, and all of them reflect your opponent's will. Yeah, basically, they're going to communicate through battle rather than through words. And she summons uh, what looks like um, blood spears, and um, she basically just starts sending them all at Sid, and Sid's dodging all of them. But yeah, Sid's having the time of his life. He's like, uh, let me call you Violet as a show of my deepest affection. Because this is like the greatest fight he's ever had and the most decent conversation he's ever had with anybody. And um, he's like, man, I wish to speak with you more. But as he's dodging, he sees a bunch of chains wrapped around her. And of course, as soon as he sees that, he's a little bit sad. He basically is like, well, too bad. He cuts all the spears, slashes her and defeats her. And basically says, I wish I had fought you at your full strength. And she even has a smile on her on her face as Sid cuts her down. She evaporates. She disappears. And then Sid jumps to fly away when all of a sudden the uh, a giant red gate shows up. Basically, Sid is... Uh, it's not shown here, but Sid's being summoned to the holy ground. So yeah, we're going to get that in the next episode. But yeah, there you go. There's Eminence and Shadow episode 11. I liked it. I enjoyed it a lot. We got uh, a lot of funny moments between the hot spring scene... The puns of the fighters, Sid calling out the background exposition characters for who they are. <laughs> and then we get, you know, just a cool short 
little fight scene between Sid and Aurora. And uh, yeah, for anyone who's kind of sad that we didn't get to see more of her, we will be seeing more of Aurora in future episodes. I can guarantee you that we're going to see more of her in this arc. But yeah, there you go. There's episode 11 of Eminence's Shadow. I enjoyed it a lot. I thought it was good. But yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope to see you next time. Take care, everybody. Later.